Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, it's all about us accountants and a new feature that's come into QuickBooks, which is going to help us make sure our client's information is spot on. In one of our previous videos, USA versus the UK product, we teased about the feature of month end checklists. In this video, it's finally come live in UK. So what we're gonna do is have a quick look at it and see what the benefit of using that's gonna be for our clients. Okay, really straightforward. You'll notice on here that unlike on the US side of things, when we looked over at that, we don't have the option on the left-hand side for month end reports. As this is an accountant's only option, we now have that hidden under accountant's tools. So let's open that up. And under cut tools, we have on the very top right hand corner, you should hopefully notice there, month end review, bookkeeping review. Okay then, so as you'll notice here, we get the option to look for transaction review. So this is gonna look at our bank transactions and it's gonna have a look and see if there's anything on there that might be missing. So if there's anything that's been unreconciled, it's gonna pop that up for you and give you an opportunity to check that. One thing that it doesn't tell you though at this point if, it, if the bank accounts are connected and as running the accounting firm, that's one of the things we can struggle with the most, not 100% recognizing that the account's been connected or not. So within this, still remember that you've got to do your manual checks and making sure your bank is still connected and the data is coming in correct. Uncategorized expenses so if you do have a transaction that's been posted to uncategorized expense it's going to be here for you and you do have the option to click directly into there to open it up transaction without payees now this is actually quite a nice feature here when you add a transaction onto quickbooks from the bank account or any transaction within quickbooks you don't have to put the payee in there the problem with not putting the payee in though is when you do things like month end reviews year end reviews it makes it really difficult to know if the right category is associated with the right transaction. Therefore, when we tell our clients to do bookkeeping and when we're training our client, we always insist that they put the payee into the actual transaction. Therefore, when we come to do our reviews, when we know if that category is correct or not. You're then looking at additional clients. So you've got check for personal transactions, review loan accounts and record cash transactions. Basically, what happens here is it takes us to the link. So your idea is check for personal transactions, chart of accounts, it's going to take us to the link. And then from here, we can use the account history option. Now, how do we stay set that they have been reviewed? Well, in the top right hand corner of each of the categories, you'll notice there's a to do waiting or done. And this is your audit trail, if you like, of saying at what stage this transaction has been done. So for example, here on categorize expense, if I still need to go to the client, I'd probably want to put that to wait in, basically saying that I've seen this transaction's an issue, but now I've got to do some investigation to figure out exactly what the problem the transaction's with. And then on these, maybe I've already gone through these ones and I'm confident that these don't need to have payee, I could then put this as done so that then I know that this has been reviewed and that all these transactions are okay. Finally, these additional items, they give you the opportunity to go in and look at something a little bit different, go into the chart of account and find it. And again, you have those same status options. So to do, waiting, and done. We also have the option to add a new additional item here where we can decide exactly what it is and we can put a link and a QuickBooks page link. What I'm hoping that means is we can actually set it up to a report because I think a report's much more useful than going to the chart of account. So let's have a profit and loss, profit and loss, but then importantly this and press save. What this should do for us, here's our profit and loss, here's our details to it. And if I click on profit and loss, it's going to take me to that custom report. So the add additional items feature means that you then can customize these checklists so that you can make sure that they're being used for what you need to be checked to make sure that it's right for your client. We then have the option to go to account reconciliation. So accounts reconciliation gives you that same view that we're used to in overview. And also if you went to report settings, but the good thing about this though, is it's giving you your physical have you done it button. So it's giving you that same button of to do, waiting and done. So it's gonna force you to go and put that in. So for example, again, we could state that this is waiting because we haven't reconciled these and it's because we're asking for those transactions or those bank statements to come from the client. Then we get the option at the bottom to add additional, again, items. So if you've got some account reconciliations in there, you might want to put them in there. And these are gonna take you to your different areas within the accounts. Final review gives you an opportunity to look at your balance sheet and profit and loss. And again, you can say, are you happy with them? 
So that's a quick look at the month end reports. It's obviously something that's been definitely needed. There's a few things on there that seems to be lacking though. If you think back to the VAT, if you think back to the smart check, there's certain items on there that we're not getting within this particular update. If you think the smart check gives you the opportunity to do and see if there's any duplicate items, that could be a quite useful feature because it was quite, quite common that a client could put in an item on the bank account that they've already put in from the transaction. So they're duplicating. Having the option to see that would have been quite nice to have it in here so that we can see if there's any of those issues that might need rip reporting. Even something as simple as the highest and lowest transactions again would have been nice. And I think one of the big ones we're missing here is a nice little report telling us on here which transactions don't have attachments to them. Because it's those sort of transactions, especially as we move more and more into the MTD scenario and we're looking at more making tax digital requirements and, so, and we're having to report more to HMRC about what's in the books, then it'd be nice to know which transactions do have an attachment on and which don't without us having to go through the normal hoops we have to go through. Finally, I think it's a great start. It's something that I think is really, really useful, but we are lacking a bit of an audit trail here. So I can't find, and I've reached out to find out exactly how to, to know who actually was the person who's to sign that particular item off. We need to know which staff member signed it off. Because from a training point of view, what if they've not 100% understood what the question was asking for? They've ticked done because they feel like they've completed that particular task. But in reality, that task has still not been completed. We need to know that and we need to see that. The other thing that I want to check now is from the accountant section. Do we have any indication of which clients have completed the month end or not? And it doesn't look like there is anything in the, which is a shame, that's a missed opportunity. And on the client page, we don't have anything indicating that that's there. And then finally, under the work section, is it prompting me to do month end reviews? No. So we think in future updates, we really need to see a way of being able to have a look at which clients still need to have a month end review done and at what status that month end is because that's gonna make our life easier as accountants to dish out that information. Now I know in our firm, we will probably adopt, we already do month end reviews anyway, outside of QuickBooks. So all we're gonna do is adopt our same solution and we're just gonna say, instead of doing an external checklist that we've created ourselves, let's use the internal one and we're gonna see how that works. But I think it would be useful for us to be able to run a report of some description to see at what status our client is. Also on that client page there, they should be a way of being able to understand at what stage that reconciliation has been done. Because that's gonna give us confidence that we've got all the information to, to do say a set of accounts or a VAT return. So again, I think those sort of things will be quite useful. Overall, it's, it's a great step, just something to look out for. We don't think it's live on every single client just yet, but in the next couple of weeks or days, you should find that you have access to it as well. My name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video with you. If you have any comments on this at all, please let me know below and let me know, do you think there's anything else that needs to be added to this? I'm gonna compile all of these responses and I'm gonna get them back to QuickBooks in one foul swoop. So do let me know below if there's anything else you would like added to this month end review. It's gonna make your life as an accountant easier to make sure that everything's right for your clients. My name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know I want him, nah, 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 nah. I wanna say, yeah, 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 yeah.